So needless to say, I was very surprised by a film that I just saw that I knew I was going to see one way or another, but I was a bit worried I might skip out on it. Blinded by the Lights. The story of a young man of South Asian descent who lived in Luton, which is a city that I used to travel around a few times, especially to go to the cinema over there and to see some people at university when I was living in uh, Buckinghamshire near Milton Keynes. So there was a lot to relate to. Just want to say on the side note, I I'm kind of familiar with that area. So seeing this was quite something special, uh, quite nostalgic, even if unintentionally, even though I was never raised in the 1980s, I was, you know, a child of the 1990s and the 2000s, 2010s, etc, etc. So it was a very unique experience uh, going along with that, and it essentially follows the story of a young man of South Asian descent who lives in Luton, who becomes obsessed with the songs of Bruce Springsteen to the point that a lot of his troubles that he's dealing with with his family and the community and unemployment, especially in 1980s Britain when Margaret Thatcher was Prime Minister and the racial tensions surrounding his area where he was called the P word and uh, being for slurs and stuff thrown against um, uh, skin is trying to terrorise the neighbourhood. It's an, another way to, for him to escape all of that by listening to his music which he found from a friend who I believe was of a Sikh origin at the um, sixth form school that he was attending. This is a, indeed a very British film, even with the aspects of the immigrant experience being depicted. I thought it was very entertaining, there was a lot that I could relate to, the music was pretty much kicking, um, regardless of the Springsteen songs that I would play, which is a artist I'm not quite not as familiar with as much as Elton John or Beatles, which had their films just this year, Rocket Man and Yesterday. Now, with that being said, about Rocket Man and Yesterday, Blinded by the Light is better than those two films. And I think the reason for it is is because it's more so about this, you know, issues that it's sort of talking about. Unemployment, racism, the 1980s, the culture that was going on, and the hysteria surrounding the sort of, um, I could say, austerity economics that still prevail to this very day in modern Britain, with the now new Prime Minister Boris Johnson taking over after Theresa May and David Camp. So there's a lot that can be said and a lot can be related to, especially with the you know, issues to dealing with skinheads and saying, you know, packies out. Sorry for the language, but you get the idea there. You see that with the whole, you know, we don't want these foreigners in our country. The whole thing is very relatable, even from a different time era. And the use of the young man's escape through music is something that any young person can relate to. I think... I, I can't remember. I know Billy Elliot had a similar element. You know, there was a young boy who's trying to listen to stuff to try to combat things that he just find difficult to deal with. And then, you know, he had films like that came out in the 90s, like Brassed Off and uh, Riff Raff, which dealt with uh, some of the issues of austerity and un unemployment and stuff, but they were very entertaining. For Monty, this is essentially following that trend. And it's also regardless of that, from the same director who done Bended Like Beckham, which is a great film that I never saw when I was at the cinema. I don't know, it didn't seem a bit girly to me at the time, but sorry if that sounded sexist, but now looking at it, because I've seen it about two or three times, it's a great film, very entertaining, about football, soccer if you're not from the uh, United Kingdom or Ireland. Um, so it had those ele very much elements in it, but compared to Better Light Back, it was very much more vocal about what it was talking about, and also one could argue it was a bit more specific in its subject matter, because Bruce Springsteen, for me, even though I don't relate to him, uh, I could relate to the, some of the ideas and lyrics that were being referenced and portrayed in the film, and all the sort of text that was popping through his head, seeing like, I just want to escape out of this world, and similar themes regarding culture and family in a South Asian, predominantly Pakistani Muslim setting are very much prevalent in this film, just like we're in Bender like Beckham, but on a more sort of harder, more political scale, and the themes are a bit more relevant now than they were 
in 2000, 2001 or 2 when that film came out. Which I remember they used to advertise a lot back at Cineworld and UCI. Oh, blimey, those were the days. So, I've said my piece. You should go see it. It's better than Rocket Man and Yesterday, as far as music films are concerned, this whole year. I wouldn't say it was a comedy, as you had some pretty serious moments. There were some scenes that were quite tough, particularly on the family end of things. And, you know, issues with unemployment and stuff. That was a. Ooh. Yeah. And it's a 12A, but, you know, it had its moments there. But overall, I was completely satisfied with it. And I hope to see what Gurinda Chatha does next. This is Skinny Ebert signing off. Until next time, keep on watching.